Hi everybody, good afternoon and welcome to WASLAB 64. I'm Rafael Chavier, a researcher and PhD student at Azulejo Network Research, which is part of ARTIST, the Institute of Arts, History and of the University of Lisbon. On behalf of my research group and National Azulejo Museum, the organizers of the YASLAB lecture series, I'll be hosting this session with Rosario Solomet Carvalho, hello, hi, <laughs> and Vera Marich, say hello to the I camera. <laughs> hello. Today we have a very special guest, Hayden. Uh, hi, Hayden. We are hi. very much pleased to, to have you here to speak about the Islamic geometric motives on Portuguese Zulejos. Hayden is architect with experience in architectural design and computation. She worked as a researcher assistant in Azerbaijan National Academy of Science, Institute of Arts and Architecture, and in several architectural offices in Azerbaijan and Turkey. She finished her master's degree in the Faculty of Architecture in the University of Lisbon with a final research topic entitled A Parametric and Vision of Portuguese and Azerbaijan Islamic Geometric Patterns. She analyzed the Islamic geometry in terms of parametric rules and investigated the possibilities of creating a parametric pattern. Hayden is now currently obtaining her second specialized master degree in BIM in Politecnico de Milano and continuing research on the relation of architectural heritage and computation. So without further ado, Please, Hayden, feel free to start. The screen is all yours. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for the nice introduction. I'm very happy to be here presenting. I hope we all will enjoy our time. Okay. So uh, the topic of uh, my today's presentation is Islamic geometric motifs in Portuguese styles. Uh, this is the uh, was the part of my research uh, I did back in Faculty of Architecture, University of Lisbon. Uh, I did uh, that my topic of the um, my thesis was geometric patterns in Islamic decoration, uh, and subtopic was parametric and vision of Portuguese and Azerbaijan Islamic geometric motifs. Uh, so I did this topic, uh, this research under supervision of Professor Paulo Pedro Gennaro and post supervision of Professor Paulo Pereira. So I would like to make a small introduction to the keyword of my thesis. So main keyword here was the Islamic geometry by itself, which is a subtopic of Islamic arts. That's why we have analyzed both parts of Islamic art, uh, its philosophy and uh, geometric approach. So and um, I tried to make a link with two territories, which one of which is Azerbaijan and the second is Portugal. And these two uh, different locations didn't have the direct relation in the history, probably, but uh, uh, I will, uh, I try to find maybe the language, uh, the universal language of pattern traveled through, through these territories. Maybe the pattern has some link in this territory. Uh, so um, I made, uh, we made a geometric analysis of Islamic geometry. Uh, and link the, to the both of the territories. And uh, we, as an output, we try to make a, a parametric design. Uh, actually, the thesis was mostly theoretical. So we uh, try to find out, try to look at, uh, the, is it possible to have a template, a parametric template for this pattern, for this traditional uh, type of art, uh, which we can use in the future. So firstly, I want to speak uh, my principles of Islamic art. Uh, when we are talking about Islamic art, uh, we should mention that, um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. we should mention that there are three main types of decorations in, in Islamic um, art. Uh, so first of the, uh, all, um, it is the um, arabesque, it is vegetal motifs. Um, uh, 
which can firstly um, understood as like a preform pattern, but it's not true uh, because um, and all of the shapes in Islamic geometry have the strict rules for this creation. And this uh, vegetal ornamentation, also called sometimes Nakshi or Islami, um, uh, all, all of these movements, um, they uh, are a part of uh, the spiral. Sometimes the spiral is uh, interlacing. Uh, and all these small parts have its own names. For example, uh, it can be goncha or maybe cloud. Um, this can represent uh, the uh, several um, types of plants, many various of types of plants. Uh, the second part um, type of Islamic art is calligraphy. Uh, we can say this calligraphy is the part of Islamic design which is more close uh, to the God. Uh, and um, this is the most ancient form of Islamic art uh, because it represents uh, sayings from uh, Islamic ideology. Um, it also uh, was used in um, the first paper, handwriting papers, when Islam appeared. So these are uh, also these um, calligraphic letters uh, also was creating due to uh, some uh, rules. For example, here we can see this is the example of Kufi script, which is the one of the ancient scripts in uh, Islam. Uh, they um, they are um, making the proportion, proportional relation. As a point, they took um, uh, the point adequate to the, this point under the letter bar, and uh, they use it as a reference. For example, the largest vertical dimension here uh, is the letter uh, L. So it consists of uh, five, uh, five uh, these points. So uh, the scale of the discalligraphy can be uh, regulated due this uh, size of this point. Uh, for example, uh, here also, it, uh, this letter includes three points here, two points here, and one point here, and related to its dimension. The uh, third part of Islamic art, uh, we can call the geometric motifs the more close to the human, uh, because you know, uh, in uh, Islamic philosophy, it's prohibited to have and the image uh, which are distract um, the prayer uh, from the um, his praying. Uh, so uh, that's why maybe this is the reason why the Islamic geometry uh, were used a lot. So we will go back, uh, we will go into these details a little bit more. Uh, here I would like to speak a, lot, a, a, bit, a bit about some important keywords in Islamic art. Uh, one of these, uh, I believe, is this uh, the harmony. Um, sometimes uh, this is uh, difficult to present to represent these uh, feelings just using the um, geometric lines. That's why in the architecture and art, uh, the, they also sometimes included uh, the um, calligraphic writing or uh, vegetal ornamentation. Uh, the, um, Eric Borg also wrote some books um, and analyzed these patterns. He talked about harmony and balance. Uh, he says that uh, the pattern made of uh, entirely of lines is incomplete. He needs to add um, extra decorative elements to be completed. Additional to different types of the art, um, the um, pattern can be um, also um, make harmonized, we can say, uh, by using different colors. For example, here, this is an example from Mamine Khatun Tom in Nakhchivan, Azerbaijan. Uh, they used um, a turquoise uh, with the stone decorations to, um, to make some shapes more visible and some not. So uh, I would also like to point out some sayings from the uh, Islamic uh, philosophers. Um, the first thing is that harmony is a term being nothing that unity in multiplicity and the same as multiplicity in unity. As I understand this, uh, it's saying that 
um, related to the Eastern geometric patterns, of course, it said that uh, we have, of course, multiple uh, multiplicit elements, uh, but unless they are united, we cannot see the harmony. And also, unless the, we ha have just one unit of the elements, also uh, we cannot uh, receive the um, harmonized shape decoration. And the second important uh, thing is um, the analyze from the Gombridge. It's uh, the analyze of psychology of art. Um, uh, the urge which drives the decorator to go on filling any resultant void is generally described as horror work, which uh, is supposedly characteristic of many non-classical styles. Maybe the term a more infinity, the love of the infinite, would be more fitting description. Framing, feeling, linking, any of these procedures uh, of graded complication can point the way towards infinity. So uh, I think this also can be linked to Islamic geometry because the infinity also the one of the important keywords uh, in Islamic art, uh, as they believe to the uh, infiniteness of the world after death and so on. So if we go back to the roots of the creation of the pattern. Uh, we can uh, observe the most familiar and natural appearing six petal geometrical flower. Uh, this the name of this pattern is Flower of Life, and this is a pattern for Phoenicians. Uh, this pattern can be also used as a template for Islamic uh, geometric patterns. Uh, it appears in different cultures and could be found practically everywhere. So, one of its First appearances we can absorb in the in Adelion, Cyprus. It's the decoration of the cap. This decoration dated back to the 1870s century before the Christ. Um, in architecture, this pattern appears in Yeji. Um, this is uh, the, the same symbol drawn in red ochre in Temple of Osiris. Uh, I would like to show also some na one natural example. Uh, as the most of the patterns, um, maybe not all, but most uh, were inspired, inspired by the nature. Uh, here even we can uh, see the exact uh, same pattern, uh, variation of this pattern appearing in the nature. The, uh, we can say to the circle and um, these uh, leaves in, inscribed in the circle. Circle here can be understood as uh, also um, like uh, representative of oneness or uh, number zero. Uh, so as we uh, talk about the numbers, we also must say that the numbers are uh, very important in uh, Islamic decorations uh, and especially in geometric patterns. Uh, so that's why Islamic mathematicians spend a lot of time um, researching numbers because they also needed to solve difficult geometrical problems. Uh, here I showed uh, one example from the Islamic mathematic, mathematician Abu Bafa. Uh, he uh, tried uh, to show um, the division of the circle by seven because seven uh, was a very important number uh, for them uh, because it was difficult to create, uh, to divide it. So um, then he divided the circle in two places, and he used uh, this uh, point above here as a center of the second circle. And this intersection, he used it as the center of the uh, last circle. Uh, and um, he created created seven um, circles. Of course, this is the approximate method. Uh, but uh, this was very useful in the construction, uh, so it was used by Islamic craftsmen back then. Um, it's also um, the um, importance of the number seven or points out by another um, mathematician, uh, Al Biruni. Uh, he told that it is, uh, he observed that it's even in nature, uh, we um, see flowers with three, four, five, six, seven or more, but it's never seven. So, um, so it's, they try to fix this problem, you can say. 
Um, so here is a book called Sadi Gilistan. It is um, and this book uh, about uh, Persian gardens. Uh, the eightness, the number eight, it was um, associated uh, with a paradise in some form. The word paradise in Iranian origin, it means the world garden. Uh, and it also can be the reference of, of humans' role as a gardener or cultivator of the green world and flowers. Um, also, the um, gardens in the ancient um, Persia was um, divided, was divided, was designed this way, and was divided into uh, eight parts. Uh, so this book also uh, consists of eight chapters uh, and um, describes the importance of this number. Um, uh, of course, when we talk about the numbers, um, we uh, should mention the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, you probably, all of you probably know that. Um, I will know. Go, will, I will not go deep into this, but um, and this uh, um, Fibonacci sequence progression were used also um, as a template uh, for some kind of Islamic. And geometric patterns, and not only geometric, even the vegetation patterns, uh, because uh, the golden ratio also based on this uh, Fibonacci sequence. When we go deeper and analyze every uh, pattern details, uh, we can get interesting results of uh, ratios and relationships of the patterns. So uh, there were a scientist, um, Chorbachi, uh, Vasma Chorbachi, in the field of Islamic arts, he has written a lot of articles and uh, topic in, uh, and papers on this topic, on topic of spiritual meaning of geometric patterns. Uh, so, in uh, one of these books, he uh, you know analyzes uh, one panel uh, from the Islamic uh, art. Um, he um, uh, try, um, in the next picture we can see as he uh, can divide as he have divided uh, this pattern into right triangles and here uh, and uh, he of course named uh, all of the side of this triangle here uh, he can uh, try to connect all uh, these triangles and uh, this also called the uh, ancient approach to the Pythagorean theorem he uh, tried to observe the uh, area and uh, he tried to all the formulas uh, regarding this matter uh, I would like also to mention one book uh, by Case Critchlow. Um, it is um, its name is uh, Islamic Patterns and Analytical and Cosmological Approach. Uh, so I will uh, really not go deep into details because it's very um, spread topic, but I will show some of this, his analysis here. Um, he tried to inscribe in the um, template. Um, consist of circles, uh, triangles, and uh, hexagons, and squares. So uh, this is a really interesting book to read. I think this is um, uh, important because he uh, tried to describe the meaning of uh, symbolism for Islamic architecture, and particularly geometry. So uh, some of uh, the patterns um, uh, creating bigger patterns while connected with each other. This is a design from the organ, from this book, Arabic uh, Geometrical Pattern and Design. Uh, here uh, you can um, see that um, this pattern has developed by connection of regular triangles, and some of them are interlacing. There, there is also a simple and interesting approach of Dimni to this interlation. Um, uh, he uh, revealed in his book a method of creating homemade Islamic tilings. And if you follow here this line, you can see that uh, the overpasses uh, interchange with underpasses over here. For example, here is overpass, underpass, over. And this is the basic method which also used in creation of uh, more um, complex patterns. So when we geometrically analyze those patterns, uh, we can see that um, it's possible to create them with the help of ruler and compass and pencil. 
Of course, it's possible to analyze them and use different formulas. Uh, but uh, back then, in the beginning of all of this, uh, the Islamic craftsmen uh, didn't um, uh, have this uh, element. And it's uh, important to go back uh, to also understand the way, how was they thinking. So uh, for creation of those patterns in the ancient world, uh, architects or craftsmen used a rope and piece of wood. Uh, the um, rope was tied to the fixed point at the center of the circle they want to draw, and the wood was tied to another end of the rope. So uh, just uh, by the walking around this point, master could make a, a perfect circle. Uh, obviously, the size and the scale of the pattern was defined by the uh, length of the rope. Uh, this method was good for uh, big patterns, but for smaller ones, they need to generate more accurate ways. And uh, because the accuracy is very important for uh, Islamic geometry, so uh, the rope method was uh, replaced by compass method, but this compass uh, were non-adjustable compass uh, because uh, it's also important to create the circles uh, with the uh, equals. Uh, the structure of geometric patterns in Islamic art mostly consists of repetition of a single motif. Uh, so they are, they are inscribed, uh, the pattern may be in circles, uh, or it may be in hexagonal shape, and these shapes uh, can be um, uh, used together as well. Uh, this design is um, from uh, the also book of Eric Borg. Uh, he um, explains step by step how we can create a pattern. Of course, he has uh, different uh, examples, and each pattern need to be analyzed uh, personally. Um, here, for example, this is the pattern inscribed in circle. So he draw the uh, hexagon here and one more. And uh, these um, intersections between the lines, he draw uh, here triangles. And then also he connected this uh, intersection between the triangles. And um, so uh, it continued to um, connect some intersections um, also between the lines he drawn. So that's it, the template for the pattern is ready. Uh, and he um, tried to, um, uh, the last thing we need to do to receive a pattern, uh, just outline the main shapes of these patterns. Um, the quantity size of the circles and the way of their intersection can be choose uh, depending on topology of the pattern, on the family of the pattern. Uh, Eric Borg describes three common families of the pattern. It's four, five, and six-folded geometry. Uh, most of the other could be created by multiplying the number of circles. Uh, it can be identified by the uh, star uh, in the center of the pattern. For example, here, uh, it is a 12-edged uh, star. So it can be called uh, as a sub um, member of the family, six-folded family. Of course, there are also some um, uh, patterns, for example, 11-folded. They are not non-normal, but mostly it is like this. So this is the final result we see. Uh, this, um, this is the pattern from Cairo. And here, I try to find a picture of this pattern um, in this minaret um, uh, on, in uh, Al Nasir Muhammad Mosque in Cairo, in Yejid. It is not the exactly the same pattern uh, because you see differences over here, but here we can understand uh, how uh, the pattern can fit uh, the, uh, the ornamentation. Because here he adds some extra geometries to fill the voids over here. So um, now I will um, talk a little bit um, general introduction of Islamic art in Portugal. Uh, this map, uh, I put this map to show the link uh, I did uh, through my uh, research from, from Azerbaijan and Portugal. Uh, as you know, the first conquest of actual Portuguese territories started in uh, the year 711. 
but we, uh, as you can see from the map, uh, the start of course of uh, Islam is some, somewhere here. And then it began to spread, and uh, it spread to Azerbaijan all the other. So uh, this um, that is the reason why it has um, some dif differences in the language of the pattern. And then they, it was in Portugal um, under the reign of Umayyad Caliphate. Um, well, uh, the actual Portuguese territory was under rule of Muslims during the more than five centuries between the 8th century until uh, the 13th century during this period. And um, this time, uh, Christians, Jews and Muslims lived there side by side and uh, had a freedom of cult. So probably this uh, cross-cultural relationship enhanced the flourishing of uh, new ideas and concepts. Even though uh, in Portugal, we cannot find the same richness of Islamic heritage found in neighboring Spain, and there are still few examples of uh, the Islamic heritage dated back uh, to Islamic Muslim reign presence in western part of the Iberian Peninsula. As you know, um, in Arabic, uh, the name of the place was Galb are Andalus. Uh, then this name is still hand, held by Portuguese southern province, Algarve. Uh, but uh, not only here, also in other regional southern region, we can uh, see the presence of um, Muslim brain. So uh, here um, I would like to sh I would like to show the monument uh, which remained from the early 9th century. Um, it can be also understood as a translation into the East work of the geometric patterns. Uh, its name is Cava de Diriato, it is in Viseo. Uh, for a long time, um, the archaeologists and architects saw that it is the a Roman uh, military camp because the, of the absence in credible findings. But um, the comparison with Middle East military efforts as well at the, of the same time, uh, give it the date um, uh, with an Iberian campaign ruled by al Masud in the central part of Portugal. Uh, sometimes these uh, East works become cities later on. Uh, this is an example of from uh, Portuguese archaeologist Elena, uh, he she gave the proper parallel with the same type of work in Lusnal Garcia. It, it is the city near Baghdad. Uh, it is in the city near Baghdad. Of course, uh, the scales uh, and sizes are different, um, but uh, but I think in uh, the importance of geometry in some part even in uh, the urban scales. So uh, one of the well-preserved um, examples of Islamic art in Portugal, it is the uh, mosque um, room located in Mortola, uh, which was transformed in a church during the several campaigns from the 13th century. As the church, its name was Nossa Senhora and the Conticel Church. Um, but it was actually the main mosque in the uh, Mertola. So here I, I put some plans that did back in um, year 1482 and then 15. We can see some elements uh, were added and some things uh, were changed uh, during this period also here. Uh, but um, and there are um, two drawings by Duarte Darmash. Um, that um, shows the temple in its early transformation um, form. Uh, oh, there is also a legend that uh, tells about this church, that the church which was once a mosque. Uh, so um, we can see here five uh, names which uh, was changed. Uh, it is the actual um, image from this um, church now. Uh, also, we can see the height minaret, or uh, um, how it's called in Moorish style Almenara. Uh, it's still 
uh, next to one of the facades. Uh, later, it, uh, it, it changed to this. So it, uh, the Islamic influence also was, um, can be observed in the interior design. Uh, this is a mihrab in Mertola Mosque. Uh, we can see these multicolored arts um, and support by these capitals. Um, Mihrab is the place in the mosque which it, it identifies the direction to the Mecca, uh, in which direction the prayer should do his prayings. Um, the second thing which also proved the Islamic presence is uh, the north door of the Mesome, of the Mertola Mosque. Um, uh, which uh, uh, the single doorway formed uh, by semi-circular semi -circular arc. Um, also, we can um, see these uh, five leaves from the interior. Uh, most of the columns uh, are preserved. Uh, they are original columns. Co uh, columns sorry. So here I will just um, quickly show the um, representation of Islamic art in the uh, smaller scales. Uh, it is ivory perfume boats from um, Braga Cathedral date back to the 10th century. And this is a Sassanid motifs um, used in uh, Mozarabic stones from Lisbon Cathedral. Uh, I will not go deep into these patterns, but I must say that uh, here we can say some figures, uh, image of animals. Um, you know, it is um, prohibited in the later Islam, but uh, at the start, at the start point, they were used these um, uh, animal motifs uh, with um, arabesques. So now uh, I will speak a little bit uh, more about uh, Islamic patterns in Azulajan. Uh, so um, uh, the remarkable number of them were produced in Sevilla and uh, Spain, and um, they were similar to ones that, that were existing in the Spain. Um, and the ceramic tiles of that period were designed following all the rules. Um, but late, um, later, we can uh, find uh, them uh, slightly changing their forms. Uh, so um, these um, rules uh, strictly follow the um, geometrical rules of uh, Islamic pattern creation, which I showed, uh, which I told before. We can also mention that the first manufacturer um, of the tiles in Portugal is dated back to the 12th century based of documentary source from Coimbra. Uh, it's, it also became um, a, a sign of the great taste from uh, Portuguese nobility uh, who were involved in the wars in Madrid since, since 15th century. Um, also, the Professor Paulo Pereira in his book pointed out that uh, the um, maybe the main episode in this spread, it is the voyage of King Manuel and his wife to the Spain uh, in the um, late 15th century, uh, where he get acquainted with uh, Spanish Montesquieu art style. Uh, he, they visited Toledo, Granada, and um, they become attracted of it. Um, here to show the comparison, I want to uh, also show the pattern from Baku, Azerbaijan. It is the Israfil Agha Mosque. Uh, you can see these patterns over here, this uh, star pattern and this x shape you can say, pattern. And they are the same, um, but the way the language they use uh, is a little bit different. Uh, here, this is the uh, void in the stone vitrage, and here is the talent. But uh, we can absorb these um, similarities a lot. Uh, many examples of Islamic uh, ornamentation can be also observed in Sintra. It is national palace of Sintra. Uh, it's more likely uh, that the first building here was uh, constructed around 10th, 11th century when Sintra was under Moorish rule. Uh, and later it was used in different uh, royal figures in Portugal. Um, 
Uh, but uh, they still um, use it and uh, included some part of the Islamic uh, ornamentation. For example, uh, I will show some images of uh, the uh, interior decoration. Um, as you can see behind the azulejos, uh, there are also some samples of the patterns in Alfajas. Uh, this is the chapel. This is a church uh, constructed in 13th century, um, but it still has modular sailing, and we can say it's one of the best preserved uh, this type of sailing in the Portugal. Uh, also, here is a room of Afonso, I think, in, and this is the oldest room in the palace, uh, and uh, the floor uh, tilings also were created, decorated with. Uh, those uh, small uh, shapes of Islamic geometry, and here we can observe these patterns on the see, on the walls. Uh, the Arab room is one of the important uh, rooms uh, in terms of use of Islam. Um, the Arab room was uh, destroyed, mostly destroyed, not uh, all of this, uh, on the earthquake. Uh, but it, it was restored later, uh, and this fountain, for example, here, it was added uh, under the reign of King Manuel I. Uh, but even uh, during this reconstruction, they uh, tried to use this Islamic geometry. Uh, we can also say that it's the Western imaginary of the 19th century, how the Islamic uh, world, Islamic decoration for. Uh, so, uh, indeed, this place become a symbol of Moorish legacy in Portugal. And here you can see an uh, example of the tiles uh, which combine these uh, Gothic uh, shapes with Islamic tiles in the world. Well, so, um, as the most of the azulejos were um, coming to from the Spain uh, in the 16th century, uh, it was um, really difficult to improvise to create some uh, something different because uh, the patterns uh, were already fabricated uh, and they used the traditional motifs of Andalusia. Uh, but uh, here we can see one example in Coimbra Cassandra, uh, which we can call in the world of now, it's creative. It, they used it um, to cover the whole column. Um, and, um, but now the, uh, not um, all part of these columns are exist, it's partially destroyed. Uh, also, uh, we can say that it has a natural and Algarve, uh, but same kind of fashion. So we can um, find these uh, patterns also in other regions, not included by Islamic um, monarchy. Uh, here. Um, I would like to show one example, uh, the photo by, by Pedro Janario. Uh, this is the Islamic tiles used in uh, the decoration of Convent of Christ in Tomar. So, after the adequate this is the um, cutting um, tiles in the little uh, pieces and create a compact geometry like kind of mosaics. Uh, this was the second method uh, which was used, uh, which was popular in uh, creation of those azulejos. And uh, this is an example from Bimaraj. Uh, the name of this um, method is called a seca, which means dry cord. Uh, this is method is based on glaze drawings applied on ceramics. They were used together on flights. That tile during the process of firing this colored glaze on the ceramics. The second important technique uh, we observe in Portugal it is technique Cuenca. Uh, in Portuguese, it's Aresta. Um, it is uh, it is what as alternative of corda seca, but later it become used more often and become one of the more major techniques 
uh, of Jose. Uh, sorry. Um, later, uh, I would like to show one uh, example. Um, this is not example actually. This is my attempt to create um, a tile uh, with uh, Islamic uh, pattern from Azerbaijan. Um, and of course, I didn't use uh, one of these traditional uh, methods. Uh, that's why the pattern is not perfect, uh, but um, I will try. I try to connect the, um, the pattern from the mausoleum Yusuf Ibn Kusayr located in Nashvan, Azerbaijan, in traditional Portuguese representation way, and this is the original variation of this pattern. So. Um, the use of azulejos continued even uh, when the theme of the geometric pattern was changed. Um, the, in the middle uh, 16th century, there was another kind of pattern, um, or maybe we can, uh, it's called like non patterned azulejos. These units are uh, monochromatic, and the mainly colors used here, like it is white, blue, and green. Uh, it is like combination of the lattice, um, and uh, this uh, gives the pattern shape you know, when we use it uh, on the wall. Uh, it is really um, simplified patterns, and they were created in the in Lisbon mostly, and uh, they are um, mostly they were created in two combinations: white green and um, white blue. But here, I would like to. Um, um, a little bit explain, uh, which the Gombrich explains in his book. He researched the psychology of the art. Um, this effect is called border effect. Um, what you can see here, it is the uh, actually precisely the same pattern. Uh, it consists of rounds, little squares, and the star shape. Uh, but um, the borders of this pattern are different. They are differently located. Uh, so uh, they give us a different uh, expression. For example, this pattern, maybe this is more dynamic. And here we even uh, cannot see these star shapes because we see these rounds. Um, uh, also, uh, here, um, it is also the, exactly the same pattern, but uh, we can say it is the visual rotation. Um, it is it is in different context, uh, but um, also here the expression with the pattern gives us it is different. This uh, in the first one it is the more static, and here we can say it's more uh, dynamic and more vertical pattern. Uh, so here is uh, one example of this uh, border effect uh, used uh, with this and um, shakipado um, types of isolation. And uh, the name of this effect is effect of tilt. So uh, the, this type of azulejo called the tapete, uh, if we can translate it like tapestry azulejo, uh, they became a trademark in the large panels applied into walls of rooms and church and all kinds of dimensions. And the secret here is to feel a, a basic shape and make this, it complex. Uh, for, uh, this analysis is also from Greenbridge, Bombridge. Um, as you can see here, he started with a simple pattern. They, he added a small flower figure in the center. Then uh, he made, added a border and made it, it more complex. Uh, it calls gradual complexity. Uh, also, the progressive feeling uh, also was used in the azulejos. For example, here you can see it consists of four pieces, as here, then it, they are all connecting with each other and they create a complex pattern. So, as the output, I would like to mention uh, several outputs were received with this uh, thesis, with this research. Uh, as the first output, um, I tried to create a parametric template. Uh, I used here Rhino software with uh, Grasshopper plugin. 
uh, and using computational techniques, I uh, try to create um, uh, star shape patterns. Of course, this is not the whole pattern, not precise pattern, but uh, this is uh, this can be used as a template for further development of the patterns. And these have adaptive uh, shape and size, uh, which can be changed through the design. Uh, also, um, they can be changed at the end because that's why it's important. It's not static. So, and second approach um, I made here, it is um, I try to do similar thing using script scripting programming language. Here I use the Dr. Lock Rocket programming language. First way I manually analyzed and I try to find all those angles, all those intersections. And then I added some scripting and it created a, um, a more complex pattern. And the last thing I would like to show, uh, it's like an, um, um, the last point of my thesis. Um, here, uh, I try to um, link all three keywords of my research, uh, this computational Azerbaijan and Portugal. So we use the Portugal, Portuguese uh, traditional material cork, and we use the laser cutting techniques uh, and created a pattern from Azerbaijan, uh, from Mamina Khatun Tom, located in Nakhchivan, in Azerbaijan. Uh, that's all. Thank you. That's all what I wanted to say. And if you have any questions or want to discuss uh, anything in detail, I put here my email. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Hayden, for your presentation. It, uh, it really was a pleasure to hear you. So now uh, we are able to push start the subject matter discussion. So okay. if you have any questions, uh, you can write it down on the chat for us to read or the alternative, you can use the hand button uh, to put the questions yourself. So mm -hmm. thank you. I have a question. This is Miguel Santos. Uh, Hello. You, yeah, I, I know that you mentioned to talk the use of the Fibonacci sequence or the golden rule? Uh, no, uh, I didn't mention it because I didn't directly study this uh, use, but um, uh, it was used uh, as a, a part of Pythagorean theorem uh, and the later analysis of the geometric pattern. But I really didn't do, dig into this because uh, there are a lot of approaches uh, and uh, a lot of um, types of analysis uh, of creation of this pattern and also I, I tried uh, to do the historical research uh, with uh, both geometrical so it was kind of complex so uh, I tried to um, find um, important parts of uh, every um, every approach I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a question by Alvaro Silva, I, I can read it. Uh, can you say if the tiles from the Ladia Castle were made by Arabs during their permanence in Portugal? No, mostly they, uh, they are made uh, later because uh, there are different uh, approaches uh, for the originating uh, this pattern. Some say it's uh, um, originates from Morocco, but uh, mostly they, they made by the Spanish influence uh, uh, and as uh, they use these patterns also from the manufacturers in Sevilla and uh, Granada. Uh, so uh, mostly it's uh, after the Islamic and most of the examples of the Islamic reign in Portugal were destroyed during several years. So it's really difficult to find uh, the pattern which um, exists from this uh, reign, actual reign. Uh, okay, we have some new questions pop, uh, popping in the chat. Uh, is it true by Tiago Barre? Is it true that in a room with an Islamic pattern, there is always a small area that is not perfect or right or a small mistake because they said say that only God is perfect? Uh, actually, it's the first time I am <laughs> seeing this type of uh, approach. To it. <laughs> so I, I never. Uh, 
find any relation to this during my research. Maybe it's true, but that I know it's not. Okay, uh, by Luisa Barbosa Cardoso. How did the draws arrive to Portuguese artisans beside cross-culture change by artisan office exchange and trade uh, relations? Uh, if I if understood uh, this uh, question, how did it run? So, uh, yeah, because uh, when it, uh, the first way, when the azulejos came from Spain, it was kind of um, not cheap thing, and it, the kings and royal uh, persons um, made this. Uh, buyings from the Spain and then uh, as it uh, used the uh, um, used in Portuguese uh, decoration more and they simplified this method so they uh, started to produce uh, this also in Lisbon in other Portuguese areas but uh, actually this uh, area is not quite um, finished uh, the research of area this area is not finished as I found because when I was doing research uh, I was uh, finding different approach um, uh, to how this, uh, this came so it's uh, still a question um, to do the further research any more questions okay there's one from Alex Hamid on which forms are the Islamic Portuguese patterns construct the most? Do you found out if they use mostly octagon, octagons, decagons, or others? As I see, in the end, it was more just fashionable, but not geometrically correct anymore. I don't know. Um, I cannot say it, but it's, I can say my thought um, that uh, I, I found a lot of five poetry and uh, six and eight fold geometries, uh, but really I cannot tell which uh, are the most. Um, I found we found out they use octagons, decagons, or others. Yes, as I said, it's what uh, they mostly use the multiplication of the five and multiplication of the uh, six. Uh, so it's rarely, for example, appearing the pattern with. Uh, 11 folded geometry because and mostly they are symmetric but sometimes they are purely not symmetric uh, ones as well um, okay yeah. uh, we have a question from Fernanda Matias are there any originals original tiles made by Islamic artisans while here and where can we find them uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of difficult question but I believe there is uh, no, but uh, if you want to find out, maybe it's better to make personal research. Uh, but in my thesis, um, it wasn't, I, I didn't uh, show any example of this. Because I mostly uh, looked to the structure of this, as I mean, in historical. So it, uh, the historical survey, I made it like uh, the first uh, the, uh, as an introduction. So as I look more, more in the geometry in order to be able to create a parametric pattern. Uh, so that's, uh, I'm more focused on, on this. Okay. Um, by Gabriel Marx, you mentioned that in early Islamic art, animal motifs were permit, pre permitted. Why did their use become forbidden or stop being used? Uh, and why was, on the other hand, vegetable representation allowed? Thank you so much. Yeah, that's a good question. Because uh, why the first day were used? Because the uh, Islamic art, when it started, in, it started of uh, like any uh, ideology, it started of kind of copying others. So uh, there were uh, these kind of uh, elements. Uh, but the reason uh, why it is prohibited now, uh, because um, uh, they think that it, the image of the human beings or animals, it is the distraction of the um, uh, of the from the image of the god. So uh, the, there should be not 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 distraction. So that's why they don't see the vegetation as a distraction because they are normally appearing and they are uh, not 
uh, cannot compare it with God, but as the animals and a person, they can compare it. That is the reason why it is prohibited. Uh, Ricardo Bastos asks, uh, may we find real Islamic tiles in Portugal? Where? Yeah, this uh, <laughs> question. Uh, if uh, by Islamic tiles uh, you mean the ones uh, who which made by Muslim, I don't know, but <laughs> the tiles um, I show them, for example, in Sintra, there are a lot of uh, elements uh, of Islamic presence in architecture, even just by walking around the Sintra, uh, we can find a lot of elements of Islamic decoration, for example. Okay. Um... A question from uh, Mario Beck. Were these Islamic patterns used continuously until now, or were there periods that they were out of fashion? Yeah, they, they became uh, out of fashion. As I, I showed an example, for example, from 17th century and late 16th century, but where the same lines became more simple and the colors, uh, they were not that colored. And they use just blue and white, and um, of course, uh, there also was the Dutch influence on this. But uh, um, yes, they, they became slightly out of the fashion. And the most fashionable period it was the end of 15th and uh, start of 16th century. Okay. Um... A question from Pat. Uh, can you tell us more about the symbolism of the ge geometry in the Islamic decoration besides the nature mimetism? Thank you. Yeah, um, uh, besides the nature mimetism, we can say that um, the, in the book uh, I gave the reference, um, the case Krish law, uh, he shows the uh, approach uh, to the analysis of the geometric pattern. Um, it shows cosmological even approach. So uh, this is not only mimetism, this is the power of a number and mathematics, even the, uh, you know, the cosmological art uh, science was also developed uh, in Islamic, uh, by Islamic scientists. Uh, so they also used it um, in creation of geometric patterns. So it's also um, have this cosmological approach. Okay, okay then. So uh, I suppose it's all for for today. Uh, thank you all for joining us once again in the in the for your time and for sharing the many knowledge of your work. Thank you so much. I also would like to thank you for inviting thank me to be able to share. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. I would just like to remember you all that the next as lab will be taking place on March 17th with Diana Gonçalves dos Santos talking about the production of azulejos in the city of Coimbra during the 18th century. So I hope you enjoy it and see you all then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.